AI is becoming a great way for artists to speed up their workflow and increase the quality of their work. Before you know it, you'll be able to create YouTube tutorials with AI and I'll be out of a job. Well, if you can't beat them, join them. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to take three different types of still images and turn them into fully animated 3D images with the help of AI. What's up everyone, this is Jordan Berton with Sonduck Film. Be sure to like this video, it helps us out a lot, and let's get started. The first photo we'll convert to 3D is this medium shot with just a single subject to focus on. We need to start in Photoshop, so here I have our photo pulled up, and we'll go to Filter, Neural Filters. This is going to open up a new menu, then we'll navigate over to Depth Blur and click the Download button right next to it. Once it's downloaded, enable the checkbox for Output Depth Map Only, click OK, and you should see your image automatically change to a weighted depth map. Go to File, Export, Export As, set the format to JPEG, Click Export, then choose the location you want to export it to. Now that we have our depth map made, we'll jump into After Effects. We have an empty composition here, and what we'll do is import our images as well as our depth map and put the depth map above the image on the layer list. Highlight the depth map, go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur, then we'll set the blurriness to around 200. Right-click the depth map, select Pre-Compose, we'll name this Map 1, Make sure Move All Attributes is enabled, and click OK. Hide this pre-comp layer, then go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, then Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. Set the Map Layer to be the pre-comp we just made, set the Horizontal and Vertical Displacement to Luminance, set Behavior to Stretch, and enable Wrap Pixels Around. You can see now when I adjust the Max Horizontal and Vertical Displacement that we have a nice 3D effect on the photo. There are breakpoints, however. If I set these values too high, you get this abomination, and we definitely don't want that, so just be careful when adjusting these values. It's also important to talk about why we made our displacement map blurry earlier. If I go back into the map and disable the Gaussian blur, then come back and start displacing it, you'll see it doesn't work the way we want, and the blurriness is what prevents this. Now we'll start animating, so set a keyframe for horizontal and vertical displacement at the start of the timeline, we'll set them both to negative 15, move forward to 2 seconds on the timeline, and then set them both to positive 15. When we scrub through, you'll now see this 3D camera movement. Depending on the image you use, you'll have to play around with the displacement values to get the effect that you want. Next, we'll add some more depth to the animation, so go to Layer, New, Null Object, Parent all of the layers to this null, open the scale of the null, set a keyframe at the start of the timeline, move to 2 seconds, then set the scale to 110%. This adds a slow zoom on the whole composition. Lastly, we'll finish things off by quickly importing some particle effects from our Motion Graphics Professionals pack using our Motion Duck extension. And now we've successfully converted our image into a 3D animated composition. Speaking of Motion Duck, as you probably know, video editing and doing motion graphics can take a lot of time and effort. To help you save time and create professional quality work, we've developed Motion Duck, an extension that includes thousands of templates. These templates can be easily previewed and applied with a simple click, and you can quickly adjust the parameters to suit your project. If you're looking for an edge in your work, be sure to check out all the templates we have available for After Effects and Premiere Pro by following the links below. And remember, creating content can be time consuming, but with Motion Duck, it doesn't have to be. Next, we'll make another 3D composition, but this time with a close-up image of someone's face. Here I have our close-up image, and the map from Photoshop has already been made using the exact same steps as the last photo, and this time we're going to make some manual adjustments to enhance the 3D effect. The auto-generated map did a good job of getting us started, but we want there to be a bigger focus on the face, so we're going to select the Ellipse tool, set the Fill to Solid Color, set the color to Black, and then set Stroke to None. Then we're going to create a big oval shape where the face is so that the displacement map has a greater effect on this area. Create an adjustment layer, put the Gaussian Blur on the adjustment layer this time so that it applies to the shape we made and the map, set the blurriness to around 500 this time, now we have this manually customized depth map. Highlight the adjustment layer, shape layer, and depth map, pre-compose them, we'll name it to Map 2, and click OK. Now we just repeat the same process as last time. Hide the map pre-comp, create a new adjustment layer, add a displacement map effect to the adjustment layer, set the map to Map 2, set both displacements to luminance, behavior to stretch, and enable wrap pixels around. 
We're going to animate the horizontal and vertical displacement again, but this time the values are going to be different because this is a different type of shot. Set a keyframe for both displacements at the start of the timeline. We'll adjust the horizontal and vertical position so that the face is to the right like this. Move to 2 seconds on the timeline, then we'll move the face to the left and adjust it so that the face doesn't get too morphed. Lastly, you can see that our morphing has caused the image to not fit our composition correctly, so we'll add a null object, parent everything to the null, increase the scale of the null to fit everything in the composition, set a keyframe, then move to 2 seconds on the timeline and increase the scale a bit more for a zoom animation. You can also create a rotation animation on the null to make the camera movement even more dynamic. And now we have our close-up image converted into a 3D animated composition. Finally, we'll use these same techniques to turn a landscape image into a 3D composition. Here we have our landscape image and our AI-generated map, and this time what we'll do is apply the Gaussian Blur to the map, we'll set it to 300 this time, then we'll go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. We're going to set the curve to be an S-curve like this, and what this does is increase the contrast so that there's more of a difference between the light and dark parts of our map. This helps a lot with landscape type images. Now, pre-compose the map, we'll name it Map3, click OK, hide the pre-comp, create an adjustment layer, add the displacement map to the adjustment layer, set the map to Map3, we'll use the same settings as before, then set a keyframe for horizontal and vertical displacement at the start of the timeline. We'll decrease the horizontal by a bit, increase the vertical by a bit, then move to 2 seconds on the timeline, We'll increase the horizontal by a good amount, and decrease the vertical by a good amount for this nice fluid movement. Lastly, we'll add our null layer like before, parent all the layers to it, and do another scale animation, as well as a rotation animation to add that final bit of movement to our composition. And now you know how to use AI to help us turn three different types of still images into dynamic 3D compositions. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more post-production tutorials every week, and remember, Always be creating.